the spiritual and physical health of the masses hinges off the perception of a single individual. That is when we, as side proposition, says that the justice system needs to step in and take proactive decisions. And therefore, we will show you, we will prove to you in today's debate that the only way to properly regulate the harms imposed by the fake faith healers is to prosecute them. And we'll be proving this to you in the following points of substantive matter. I, as your first speaker, will be dealing with the point of why appealing to the, why appealing to the justice system is an appropriate action in this instance. My second speaker will deal with how, how religions are hereby uh, enfranchised into society. And my third speaker will be dealing with the issue of adaptive nature of justice, commonly known as buying. So we, as side proposition, define the motion as who, who, who really are we talking about with regards to the faith healers? And we see that these faith healers are the people who premise their doctrine on the belief of, the, of an ability of a supernatural God to heal the Ill, uh, Ill followers of their congregation. And we see that rejecting treatment, medical treatment, and where the followers uh, where followers have died in these instances uh, is really when fake healers coerce individuals into rejecting any, kill, any medical treatment yes, that could help aid in their ailments. Yes. So why do you think that your, with your policy the deaths are only limited to fake healers when we experience the same things in hospitals where these people mix traditional medicines and mix the med med well, Western medicines? Well, of course, what we see is that in, in the current, what, what, what is currently happening is that deaths are occurring twofold here with what you have mentioned and with these faith healers. But if we prosecute these faith healers, we can eradicate the deaths that happen through this and therefore uh, serve justice as a whole by protecting, its, by protecting our people. So we need to imply this, form, uh, this clarity that uh, we as side proposition want. And that is, we feel that there are legitimate faith healers in society and that people who have already affected miracles and healed people in such situations. But this debate is not about them. It's about these fake healers, fake faith healers that are causing these deaths. So now I end with my formalities and we'll begin with my positive matter. With my first point of why appealing to the justice system is an appropriate, uh, appropriate action in this instance. So what I aim to prove to you is that in these specific occasions, the only way to get recourse is through the justice system. And it's vitally important to us that the opposition proves to us why we shouldn't use the justice system um, when the core aim of this justice system is to protect the people. No, thank you. So we show you that we'll be show I'll show you that we will prosecute, prosecute these fake healers for four reasons. First, firstly, when the person helps someone to die. So this currently what we see is that we prosecute people who assist in suicide. And, and this is an example, assistive uh, suicide, where, the, where a person wants to commit suicide but needs the help of someone else to aid them and uh, allow them to die. Oh, sure. and, we, and we see that the people that help them commit, these, uh, uh, commit the suicide uh, are prosecuted for many reasons. And the main underlying reason is because it undermines justice, because it undermines the right to life. So we need. So what we see is that the fa these fake uh, healers, faith healers, are a mere extension of this entire ideal. What they do is that they are providing knowledge to the people that they are supposedly going to heal, and where the end of this uh, passing of knowledge is death. So we see that even if the faith healers didn't know that they are passing on this knowledge of death, of specifically death to their, to their followers, but I, uh, but I involved in the death of these followers, we would still prosecute them because that's the correct me method of uh, justice. But secondly, if we see that these faith healers had no correlation to the death whatsoever, if that follower committed suicide for a totally unrelatable issue, these faith healers should not be prosecuted because that is the proper method of justice. But now, that, now for the second point of why we prosecute, and that would be the mega influence that these healers have. So we see that you have two types of healers. 
people that are part of the institution that have, and being part of these mega institutions such as churches and temples, we see that they have the full backing of the congregation. And since it is, in instance, as examples would be mega churches, they would have mass backing from these people. But secondly, we see people that are not, you have faith healers that are not necessarily part of any specific organization or institution. An example would be Ben Hinn. And he has already has a thousands of followers worldwide. So we say, why would these people or masses follow these uh, healers? Well, because it, for the inherent fact that it deals with these people's religion. These healers um, give, an, give an incentive for these people to follow because religion is inherent to these people. It gives them uh, faith in a God and it also provides them with a belief system on how to run and conduct their lives. So we see that religion it plays an important role and therefore incentivizes people to follow these faith healers. But secondly, we can look at the nature of the people that want to get healed, of these followers. It deals with sensitive issues. People that are suffering Super. with, no thank you, it's one woman, uh, that are suffering with these uh, ailments are actually uh, have terminal cancers and have been um, subjected to intense treatment sessions and they were completely vulnerable, no thank you, to actually uh, go somewhere and get another form of treatment. So we see that they're vulnerable in this sense and therefore they go to these faith healers. But what this, what this means is that because of this such, uh, because of such a great backing, no thank you, they influence greatly, of, they influence their followers greatly and believing as they believe that this is a message from God. And what this inherently means is that these healers can preach about something and, be, and their believers will believe it. And when you have so much of power, it is necessarily, it's necessary to regulate this power to ensure that you do not, do not cause harm to other people in, or even death to other people in society. So we see that they need to regulate and make sure that these uh, individuals are protected. An example would be famous celebrities that are often apprehended for any, for any incitement of harm or racial slurs because they could, they have a really large fan base and could, in, uh, could inflict harm on others and therefore need to be prosecuted in this way to uphold justice. And thirdly, we see the whole idea of children. Children are vulnerable members of society and they are placed under the, guard, uh, the guidance of guardians because they are, they value, their decisions aren't really valued at this stage because for two reasons. They have very little life decisions to make a, a proper analysis and make these uh, decisions but for a second reason that they do not have the resources in order to make adequate decisions. So we see that since they are under the parental control, if their parents are easily influenced by these fake faith healers, then they would subject their children into these forms of uh, healing. And we see it could lead to two things. One, the parents dying and these children will be orphaned. Two, these uh, parents dying and then that is just plain failure of justice in this part. And therefore we feel that in order to uphold justice, Today, in order for all of us to stand for justice, we need to propose the motion to have place vote. Thank you.